what's up? How we doing? Yeah, we're gonna be unboxing this today. Figured why not? It's raining, it's miserable outside, and I have absolutely nothing else to do today. Good day for a little unboxing. Plus, I got plenty of coffee. Woo! What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Overload. And yes, today I am doing a little bit of an unboxing. Nothing too extreme, nothing too crazy. Uh, but as some of you guys probably remember, back when I filmed the Reckless Hobbies uh, vlog video, where I was just up there a couple weeks ago, I did pick up this Team Associated Pro SC10. So, all right guys, well, I'm gonna end the vlog here. Ended up walking out of the store with that. It's the Pro SC10 Team Associated. First time I've ever had a Team Associated truck. So, I have yet to actually take it out of the box. Yes, I did open it up a little bit just to kind of peek inside of there because, you know, that's just what I like to do. So, I've already kind of taken a look, but I figured I'd show you guys here on video since you guys will probably be seeing this truck quite a bit. I am going to be using it for doing racing um, here at the Reckless Hobbies indoor track. So, it is going to be strictly an indoor track uh, RC truck. Uh, I'm going to learn the setups and all that, but we'll get into that here more later on. Again, this is the Team Associated Pro SC10 110 scale ready to run two wheel drive electric off road truck. Now, this truck is brushless uh, and it does actually come with a lipo battery and a charger. That's pretty cool because that doesn't usually happen too often. Anyways, um, get all your information here on the back. Not going to go into detail on that. Uh, yeah. Just get right into it, shall we? Screw the box. Boom. Got ourselves some goodies in there. Goodies, goodies. Uh, first things first, we have our bag full of books. What do we got in here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Don't worry, I'll do some close-ups of all this as I'm filming, so don't worry. Um, got what looks like a spare shock tower and some tools and some other odds and ends parts. Binding, uh, binding tool, binding connector for the transmitter receiver. Binding plug. That's it. <laughs> Uh, some spacers for the shocks to adjust the ride height and so forth. Got some books, uh, some more instructions manuals, Got an instruction manual on the controller. Gift certificate from Associated. Ooh, I like gift certificates. Let's see here. Your free RC training tool, advanced RC racing simulator, 6,000 plus registered users, your key code. Sign up for your free-to-play VRC Pro account at www.vrcpro.com and download the sim for free. Use the key code to unlock the full option modified SC10 4x4 short course truck in the simulator. Ooh. Ooh. I th we're going to have to try this. We're going to have to do this. I'm going to have to make a video, simulate it, do it on the video. Uh, do it on my computer, I mean. Oh, this is... Oh, we're going to hold on to this, baby. Got to go check that thing out. So that's cool. Uh, we have our instructions manual. Uh, declaration of conformity. Certificate of conformity. Um, and then just other, other paperwork stuff. The typical stuff you would get in most unboxings. Next. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. Because it stands up. <laughs> Doesn't fall out just yet. Ah. Can we do it? Oh, we did it. Cool. So, like I mentioned, it comes God damn, that is some extreme packing tape. Jesus. All right. So, like I was trying to say, it comes with a basic charger and a battery. The charger uh it, nothing special. Looks to be uh let's see here any specs on this. Ah, there they are. Um, one, two, and three selectable charge, uh, uh, amp rates, four millimeter output ports, LED charge status. Uh, it'll do 
LiPo and LIFE, or L-I-F-E, balance connector, HX, T-plugs for the charge connector. Uh, it, okay, so the charge circuit power is 30 amp, uh, 30 watts, so it's nothing crazy. It's not going to charge your batteries um, within like an hour. It might take a couple of hours to charge your battery. Uh, two and four series cell count. Now, I'm not going to use this, honestly. Um, I might bring it as like a backup charger in case I forget to bring my main charger. Uh, but I already have a pretty decent charger right now. Pretty basic. Actually, it feels pretty solid. Like there's like metal on the outside of this or something. I don't know. It's, it's got some good weight to it. I actually like that. Take a look. Not bad. Uh, so 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S. So it will go up to a 4S LiPo. And you can just hit the switch for the selectors. Uh, actually comes with a Dean's plug. And your cable to power it on. So we have a 2S 3300 milliamp LiPo battery. But the battery itself is actually shaped more like a NIM battery pack. Check that out. It's rounded on the edges where most LiPos are more of a square. Um, but it, yeah, it is definitely a LiPo. There's the Dean's connector, the balance plug on there. Pretty lightweight. Might be good for a backup battery, but I did order up some more batteries here um, from another company that I'm going to be using on this anyways. Go into more of that in another video. Okay, so there's the... All right. It's tape on both sides, holding the whole thing in. Go figure. My goodness. All right, so there's tape here, 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 and on the sides. That's right, I win. Me. Cardboard. Okay, so before we get into the truck, uh, controller. Very basic, cheap feeling controller. Uh, nothing special about this whatsoever. Um, it does feel pretty good in my hand. I actually can wrap around quite a bit. Uh, the trigger feels close. I, you know, I kind of have long fingers, so I'm not necessarily gonna be using this controller. I will for the first um, first video or two, just for the sole purpose of using it with this truck. Uh, but I will be eventually switching it over to my Spectrum transmitter. Uh, this guy here, the DX4S. This is the transmitter I've been using for years now. Um, so I'm super comfortable with using that. Plus it's got a lot of uh, things that I can change on the car itself. But uh, taking a look at this, you have your throttle adjustment rates, your steering adjustment rates, uh, steering and throttle reverse switches. You got a nice little, oh, we got a little, little clear plastic. Look, ready? I love doing that to electronics. Um, battery, four double A's. So the controller's nothing fancy, nothing special, but it, it is your typical ready to run controller. That's pretty much it. Um, but, okay. So, you got a giant zip tie underneath on both the front and the rear. There's that one. There's that one. You guys can stay over there. All right, check this thing out. Now this is pretty sweet. One tenth scale short course truck. Nothing overly fancy about it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, but this is in the ending of that reckless video. You guys saw me driving a short course truck around, uh, kind of filming. This is that exact truck, uh, exact same truck, not that truck specifically. That was somebody else's that they let me borrow. Uh, but this is the same truck as what I was using. And I actually was very comfortable at driving this thing. It was very smooth driving, uh, very soft feeling. Uh, something that I kind of wanted to, actually, to be honest, stiffen up the suspension a little bit. 
Um, but overall, I do believe that this is going to be a great first car for me to learn uh, racing on and so forth. Uh, pretty solid feeling. Okay. Um, so I may have already done this part that you guys are about to see before. Except I kind of screwed up really bad and forgot a lot of information and wasn't happy about it. So I'm redoing this part. Though you guys never really saw that part. I just... I, you get where I'm going with this? We're just redoing this part of the video. So, okay. Let's jump back in. Uh, now that you guys have seen all of that, it's time to show you guys what's on the inside of the car. And hopefully this time I'll be able to give you guys all the information that I didn't have before. It's just part of filming and being a YouTuber. Plus, I'm very forgetful. So, anyways. <laughs> all right. So, honestly, uh, looking at this chassis for the first time. Uh, now, mind you, again, yes, I have driven this car once before. I fell in love with it. Honestly, I did feel like a really solid uh, car. It was very smooth around the corner and throttle and so forth. Uh, but now that I'm actually getting to take a good look at this, the chassis and everything... It is, uh, it is a very solid truck, honestly. Uh, the chassis does not flex. There's no flex in the chassis. The shock towers do not flex. Either one. Uh, the front bumpers. The front bumper is solid. The rear bumper is actually really solid. The shock towers have very little movement. You know, enough to where they can move when you flip over, obviously. Uh, the control arms. The control arms are always something I like to check. No real play in the control arms. They're actually really solid. I would say they're pretty close to RPM control arms, honestly. Uh, slight, slight play if you really put a lot of effort into it, but not enough to where I'd be concerned with it breaking. Um, like, it's not that hard plastic where if you hit something, like I just did, uh, it's not going to break. Uh, but it's solid enough to withstand impacts and damage, as far as I can tell. Uh, there's nothing really fancy going on here, honestly. Uh, but let's look at some of the things that it's got going on, right? Let's start with the tires. Now, the tires are just a basic ready-to-run tire, though they do feel like they have a decent amount of grip to them. Usually, you can tell on cheap tires, they're very smooth. Your finger just kind of glides right over it. Uh, it just feels like a cheap rubber. But this doesn't... Yeah, it's not quite a cheap rubber, honestly. There's a lot of play in the tire. Um, it feels like there's a lot of grip. I don't know how well these tires are going to do on carpet. Um, I am going to need to look into possibly other tires that'll do well on carpet. I'm not, again, I'm not sure how well these ones will do. The car I was using had a totally different set of tires on it than this one. Uh, so I can't say for certain how well these do. But the foams inside feel pretty sturdy. A lot of flex in it. Um, they did use the replica method race wheels for the uh, rims on this. Seems to spin pretty good. For ready to run bearings not bad see how long those last right <laughs> uh, you have your turnbuckles which are all metal no plastic uh, they are fully adjustable on them uh, the shocks are aluminum with plastic caps plastic bottoms uh, but the bodies themselves are aluminum that nice blue finish I like that that's very cool uh, they are fully adjustable uh, by adding in more spacers into the spring to give it more ride height um, steering. How much play do we got in the steering? Not too bad. A little bit of play. Looks to be more in the steering linkage than the actual hubs or the linkages themselves, the turnbuckles, um, because everything's moving except for the steering servo. So I know the play is definitely more in on the steering, um, steering rack setup. Steering servo... Pretty easy to move, so it's not an overly torque, torquey motor. Usually you can tell if you kind of give them a little play, they'll have a little bit of resistance in them. Uh, I've noticed, especially with like the crawling, the servos I use for crawling, they, they're a little stiffer to move. This is pretty easy. Uh, it does have a, it does have a servo saver in it, which is a plus. Uh, as far as the actual specs of the steering servo go, I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, I didn't really see any specs, but if I do come across specs, I'll post them down here at the bottom for you guys. Moving back, we have our ESC, which is the SC600BL. Uh, this is 2S and 3S capable. It is waterproof, has a fan. Um, 
So it is 2S, 3S uh, LiPo and NIM, uh, 2S, 3S LiPo compatible. And uh, I believe if I read six and nine cell NIM battery packs capable as well. Again, I'll post that information down at the bottom. You have your on and off switch right next to the battery compartment. Battery compartment is basically like the length of the truck. Uh, there is a foam piece here in the front, but it, you can, you know, you should be able to easily remove that if you have a longer battery. As far as battery height goes, um, doesn't look like there really is much of a problem. There is kind of a little bit of a lip in the back here, uh, but I suppose you could put a little foam piece back here if you want to push it forward. If you have a taller, you know, higher up battery, like a 3S and 4S battery pack. Uh, if you were to change out, obviously, the electronics, you could run 4S. You, you should still be able to fit those size batteries in there. Uh, the lengthwise, again, is perfect. So battery compartment pretty much takes anything, as far as I can tell. Uh, moving on to the receiver. The receiver is your basic, I believe, two-channel um, receiver. Nothing fancy as far as I could read. I'm not going to take the time to take the cover off because it's just your basic receiver. However, I did read that this receiver does have gyro built in to help you with steering. Uh, so it's something I'm going to look into here a little bit more, figure it out. Uh, obviously it would only work with this controller, but as I mentioned, I will be swapping it out for my other steering, sir, my other transmitter. Uh, but I will experiment around a little bit with that. So that'll be interesting to try out. Again, in the rear shocks, same as the front, aluminum bodied, plastic caps. Um, again, feels nice and smooth, right? Seems pretty decent. Uh, tires, again, back are the same as the front. Uh, the rear shock tower seems pretty solid. You have a decent, uh, looks like support here for the um the body posts and the rear bumper the whole brace the whole structure of it seems pretty solid back here where the the motor is and the transmission is looks like steel drive shafts steel drive shafts in the rear which are actually really good no plastic no necessarily going to wear out which is awesome even the the uh, cups on the transmission side are steel as well uh, which is again awesome. You have adjustable turn buckles in the rear. The the underside. Now that we're looking at it, it's pretty flat, pretty basic, smooth, shiny right now. It's not scratched up. Kind of enjoying it. Kind of enjoying it. Just gonna take it in for a moment. <sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, so again, we have a brushless motor setup. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on the motor size. Let me let me look into that. Hold on. It is a 3300 kV brushless motor. Uh, should be more than enough for this. As far as I could tell, again, when I was driving it, uh, that one time the motor felt very smooth, very easy going on the power. Wasn't uh, jerkish or sluggish or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. You got your bump side rails, or as I like to call your handles, because that's what I usually use it for. <laughs> Um, but that's honestly it. I think honestly, overall, it's, it's a pretty solid truck. And especially for what I'm doing, I'm not necessarily bashing with it. Uh, I'm going to be racing with it. Of course, it's going to get beat up. It's going to get abused. Things are going to wear out. Uh, but I am going to look into, you know, upgrade options as time goes on, you know, new tires, uh, any aluminum parts that I can probably get for it to help, you know, improve the suspension and steering of it. I'm definitely going to do may play around with the gearing a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm going to use this as kind of like a learning tool. And that's, I think, what this is going to be really good for. Especially since up at Reckless Hobbies, they have all the spare parts for this. So if something does break while I'm on the track, I'm right there. I can grab the part, throw it in, and go. So that's definitely a plus when getting this. Wah! <laughs> Pretty decent little truck, if you ask me. Honestly. Uh, just kind of doing a quick overview, just making sure I want to give you guys all the information that I can in these videos. And it's been a while since I've done an unboxing, so 2.4 gigahertz, two channel radio with dynamic vehicle control receiver featuring built in adjustable gyro. So that, that's that gyro thing that I was telling you guys about water resistant enclosed receiver box, 12 millimeter big bore shocks is what those are. 2.6 to 1 ratio gearbox with heavy duty sealed gear differentials and externally adjustable version 2 slipper clutch. 14 precision rubber rubber sealed ball bearings, so 
ball bearings. They're not bushings or anything like that, which is awesome. Uh, rear CVA drive shafts for more reliability. Vertical ball ends for roll center adjustments, front and rear. Uh, steel turnbuckles. Not bad. Not bad at all. Is there anything else? Anything else? All right, cool. That's pretty much it. All right. Well, anyways, you guys, <clears throat> thank you so much for watching today's episode. I know it was nothing too extravagant, too over the top. Uh, but today is kind of a lazy day for me and I had some time and I wanted to get this thing unboxed and just get it on the shelf to get ready to go and do some videos with. So that's kind of where today's video came into play. Uh, I did want to actually make a running video with it. I wanted to take it out and do some stuff, but it has been raining for the last several days uh, and it looks like it's going to be raining again here nonstop for almost a week. So I don't have time to get it out for a running video just yet. So this will have to do. I think the closest we'll get to a running video is this. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, enough fooling around. So, so that's it. Anyways, you guys, uh, feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links for all that is down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you guys are notified when I do upload videos, which I am trying to do weekly here. Uh, may not always happen, as you guys can tell, but I am trying to do it weekly. Um, and if you guys have any questions about this truck or anything else that I got, feel free to post them down below in the comments section. And until next time, you guys, I'll see you on the next RC Overload. Later. Where's my coffee? Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Ah. Sometimes you have to wonder if this is actually a NIM battery and they just, you know, threw in leads to make it look like it was LiPo. I mean, how, without taking it apart, how do you really know that it's LiPo? I mean, words are just words. Lettering is just lettering. Anybody can stick a sticker to a battery pack. I mean, it, it looks like a NIM. Why would you do that? It's light. There's like no weight to this. Ugh.